Okay, in uh, section 11.8, we're going to start talking about power series. Uh, a power series is um, is just an infinite series that has very variables in it instead of just numbers. Uh, right in this particular section, we're going to focus on the power series that you can get from this geometric series pattern here. We, we've used this a lot. If you replace uh, R with X, if you take the same geometric series and wherever there's an R, if you just put an X, then it, it becomes this. In fact, the sum of the series would be 1 over 1 minus, R, 1 minus X, so it, you, get, you get this. So this is an example of probably one of the, one of the simplest power series. You could, you could call it the, the geometric power series if you, if you want. This is the function right here. The function uh, 1 over 1 minus x can be represented by this infinite series. It's called a power series because it has powers of x. Uh, what does that mean? That, that means, for example, now, it, by the way, it, it's, it's going to converge as long as r, which in this case is x, r has to be absolute value less than 1. So the absolute value of x has to be less than 1 for this to converge. It can't equal 1. Remember, the, the geometric series di diverges when r equals plus or minus 1. So anyway, uh, what I was getting at is um, you could think of it like this. This is kind of unusual to think about, but this is, this is a function here. 1 over 1 minus x is a function, and it can be represented by this infinite degree polynomial. So for example, uh, as long as x is absolute value less than 1. So if you want to plug in a half, one, one half into here, what is f of 1 half? f of 1 half is 1 over 1 minus a half, which turns out to be 2. If you plug in 1 half everywhere there's an x, and you add up this infinite, this would become an infinite series, you would get 2. So this function can be represented by this polynomial. It's kind of interesting. And what we're going to find is a lot of the functions that you've seen, like sine of x, cosine of x, and e to the x, can also be represented in terms of power, power series. Here's the idea. If you were to take this function 1 over 1 minus x and just chalk, uh, chop off the first couple of terms, those would be the uh, partial sums, wouldn't they? If you look at the first two terms, that would be s sub 2, 1 plus x. This linear function, which is the uh, the tangent line, it turns out, this, this is, is, the, is the tangent line to this function at, at um, when x equals 0. Uh, this linear function is, is an approximation to the fu function value. Notice it, it's only good for a certain uh, re region. x absolute value has to be le less than 1. If x gets beyond 1, you see how it's a horrible uh, uh, pro approximation. Out, out here, the function 1 over 1 minus x is, is way, way down here. So it's, it's a pretty good uh, est estimator for the function as long as you're close to x equals 0 or as long as r is, as long as the absolute value is less than 1. Now, if you start using more terms, like, well, let's use the first, uh, the first three terms, you see that this quadratic function looks like a better uh, approximator for, for, for the function 1 over 1 minus x, and so on. The, the cubic function is even a better. If you take the first four terms, this third degree polynomial function is a better approximator. Anyway, and this is a fourth degree, uh, the first five terms will be the fourth degree polynomial function. The more terms you take of the power series, the better the approximation is to the actual function. So if you, if you take infinitely many terms, it would actually equal the fun it would be it would equal the function as long as you're between negative one and one. Interesting, huh? Okay, let's see, let's look at some, so uh, it turns out um, in this section, every single one of these power series can be obtained by looking at that one geometric power series. Uh, this one, for example, 1 over 1 plus 2x, remember we have to have we have to have uh, we have to have uh, 1 over 1 minus x, right? Uh, this, is, this, is, this is the actual power series that we're using is this, this one. So we have to be kind of clever to, to think of this in this in this form here, okay? But what are we going to do? We're going to first of all Instead of a minus, we're going to think of it. Think, instead of a plus, we're going to think of, of, of subtracting a negative 2x. Then we're, we're, we're going to think of this. This this is think of negative 2x as x. We're, we're, we're literally plugging in negative 2x everywhere there's an x in the original power series. So we get this. And so it, if you think about it, it, it turns out to be um, the sum n equals 0 of negative 2x to the n power. You could break that up if you wanted to and say it's an alternating series, isn't it? Now, what is the uh, radius of, con what, what, is, what is the uh, convergence uh, inter interval? What's inside, what, what r is, would be negative 2x, has to have absolute value less than 1. So if, if you solve that absolute value inequality, 
and you see that x has to be between negative one half and one half. So r, which is half the length of the interval of convergence, would be one half. So we we can use that geo geometric power series as long as it, we can we can try to make it fit the the form. Okay, th this here's another one. This one we have to have a one here. Okay, we, we, we know we know how to handle it. This is a plus instead of a minus. You can think of it as minus a negative. But you would factor out a two. That's how you would start. You'd factor out two from the bottom, and then and then this would actually fit the pattern. You can think of this as one half times one minus negative three x over two. So the one half factor is out, and then it, it fits the pattern for the geometric power series. R would be negative three x over two. There you go. So this is the answer. Um, you could, if you wanted, you could uh, break off the negative part and make that an alternating part. And you could bring that one half in. You see how it's two to the n on the bottom? It becomes two to the n plus one. So what is what is the interval? What is the radius of, of convergence on that one? Well, it turns out r absolute value negative three x over two. That's the absolute value of r has to be less than one. So you would multiply. You would uh, break that in between negative one and one. Remember that's how you solve an absolute value inequality. Multiply by two and divide by three. So the interval would be from here to here. So r would be half that interval, which would be two thirds. Interesting, huh? All these are rigged. That's what I'm trying to say. They're all rigged. They can all be written in terms of um, that geometric power, power series. Don't worry about this x squared on the top. I'll tell you what to do. We'll, we'll see what to do with that in just a second. But this actually, besides the x squared, this actually fits the pattern, uh, uh, kind of. You first of all, you, you have to have a one. Let me go back to this just for a second. You see what's going on here, folks? You have to have a one minus x or one minus some, something. As long as you have one minus something or one plus something, you can you can use that pattern. So this this was x minus two. So the first thing you would probably do there is you would factor out a negative two from the bottom. Pretty sneaky, huh? And then uh, we could move it out like this. Factor the x squared out and the ne negative two out. So we could write it like this. Then we can write a power series for this. This is a geometric power series. We all we have to do is replace x with x over two. So so we get this. Uh, the at negative x squared over two factors out, and this 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 becomes uh, the power series by the geometric power series by replacing x with x over two. So we could write it like this, and then at the end, if you want to move the um, the x squared in, won't, won't that be x to the n plus two? And also see the two on the bottom. Instead of two to the n, becomes two to the n plus one, and let's just leave the negative outside. So there there's the power series. So like I said, these are all rigged. So like I said, these are all rigged. Uh, this one, you would say, well, wait a second, what do you do here? This, uh, this isn't one minus x. Um, uh, you could use partial fractions on this if you wanted to. That's one way to do it. I just re realized another way you could do it too. Couldn't you think of it as, uh, you could factor a negative one out and write as one minus x squared. Couldn't you do that? I just realized that. Anyway. That would, that would be a different way to do this, but I, I, on some of them you, you may have to use partial fractions. So, so what, what, you, what you could do is you could say two over x squared minus one is a over x plus one plus b over x minus one. When you solve by partial fractions, you find a is negative one and b is positive one. So you go back over to here. Then what I'm thinking is you could find a power series for each of these. First of all, this one you have to write as one minus negative x, and this one you have to, um, you have to factor a negative out of this, this one. So the power series, I'm going to factor the negative one out of each of them, okay? I factor a negative one out of here, a negative one out of here. This power series is an alternating one. You get one minus x plus x squared minus x cubed and so on. And this is going to be just be one plus x plus x squared and so on. But there's a negative we factored out of both. So what that what ends up happening is, I, if you look at it, don't all the, uh, all the odd powers of x cancel? Negative x and positive x negative x cubed, positive x cubed. So all you have left are the even powers, and you have two of them, right? So so you would do that, and so you could write this as the, uh, factor the negative two out, and then I believe you'd have this power series, which is exactly, now that I think about it, is exactly what you would have had had you just factored a negative one out. If I were to do this problem again, instead of doing all this, I might just factor a negative one out of the bottom and then use the, use the, um, uh, use the ge geometric power series straight, which is that, and get the same answer. Check me on that. And the radius is one, by the way. The radius is one because um, 
because uh, each of these have rate radius one. Remember, we're using the geometric power power series. Okay, uh, something else in this section that's kind of important. It turns out if you have a power series, uh, it doesn't have to be centered at x equals zero. It could be at x equal a also, by the way. Uh, the ones I've done have all been x equals zero. Um, but anyway, any, any, we'll talk about this more next section. But what this theorem says is uh, if, if the power series has radius of convergent r, then you can differentiate the power series. It'll have radius r. And you can integra integrate the power series. It'll have ra radius r as well. Anyway, uh, the, inter the, the radius of convergence does not change when you differentiate or integrate term by term. So let's look at a couple more here. So how would you find a power series for this function, inverse tangent of x? Well, re recall inverse tangent of x is the antiderivative of one over one plus x squared, right? So what we're gonna first of all do is find a power series for one over one plus x squared, which you would replace the x in the, the geometric power series with negative x squared. Remember, you have to have a minus here. So you, you get this, this is, this, is, this, is the, this is the power series for one over one plus x squared. Then, uh, which by the way, if you wanted to think of it this way, you, you would replace x with um, negative x squared in the geometric power series, so it becomes this. Now, when you, when you, when you integrate this, fu this, uh, this function or this power series, now you can integrate term, term by term. So what, what you end up with is you get a constant of integration, right? And when you integrate this, you get, term by term, you get this. Now, however, notice we're trying to we're trying to uh, express inverse tangent as a power series. Inverse tangent of zero is zero, but if you look at this power series, inverse tangent of zero, these all drop out as c. So we, we just showed that c has to be zero. Anyway, so this is what you get when you integrate term term by term of this power series right here. You end up with with the the power series for inverse tangent negative one to the n x to the two n plus one over two n plus one. Nice, huh? Last thing, and we'll, we'll pick more, up more of these later. So let, let, what I said uh, at first, let me say it again. Oh, by the way, the radius of, 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 of convergence doesn't, doesn't change. It's the same radius of convergence of this. And this was, remember, the geometric power series where x, or in this case, x squared has to be between that negative one and one, or negative x squared, so, so r would still be one. Okay, so everything in the homework in this section relies on that geometric uh, power series. You got to be clever at times. Now that we know the power series for inverse tangent of x, you could replace wherever there is an x with a 2x. You see right there where there is an x, I'm going to put a 2x right there. Okay? And then this x cubed, don't worry about it. Well, all, the, all that's going to do is raise the, uh, well, first of all, I'm going to break up the, um, I just saw a problem. This, uh, see this 2 out, this 2 inside the parentheses? I should take the 2 out. It should be uh, 2 to the 2x plus 1, or 2n plus 1, because this is just x to the third, right? When you have an x to the third, it raises the exponent on x. So this should be 2n plus 4 on the x, but the 2 would still be 2 to the n plus 1. You got it? You, you can't add it to the exponent. The base is different. So this is what you should end up with. Anyway, so well, what I was saying is the, um, the power series that you have on your homework, they all come from that geometric power series. Now, in terms of the radius of convergence, the radius of, of convergence of inverse tangent was, was um, x between negative one and one. But since we, we replaced it with two x, the radius of convergence now becomes between uh, negative one half and one half, so the interval I should say. So the radius is one half. Okay, well, t so ne next time we're gonna con continue talking about power series. Um, we're gonna talk about more general types of power, power series, not, not all coming straight from the ge geometric power series. Okay, we'll see you later, bye-bye.